Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More, it's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to uh, start the explanation on how to use Scalar 2 in details. And um, I'm going to start with the detection of chords and scales. I'm going to start very much from the basics so that uh, everybody has an opportunity to learn how to use this fantastic app. But of course, as we move on to other tutorials, we will move into more advanced topics. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm inside the AUM. I'm going to create a Node channel and also a MIDI channel, like so. Okay, perfect. So next, what I would like to do is to actually bring Scalar 2. So I'm going to scroll down, click at the top, and I'm going to search for Scalar 2, and I'm going to load the full edition of the Scalar Light 2 by the Scalar 2 version, like so. Now, let's open it and maximize the window. There is a detect button here. Let's click on the detect button. And as you can see, it allows you to choose from um, a MIDI source, also an audio source, and it allows you also to open a MIDI file and also to open an audio file, okay? So be attention, at least in the version that I'm running at the moment, if you open a MIDI file, an audio file, while it is working as an AUE, for instance, actually, it crashes internally. So you just need to use these two options in a standalone mode. Okay, so now let's leave it as a, a MIDI as a source. Okay, so the next, the, the next thing I want to do is to show you first of all, a simple detection, just inputting MIDI um, signal. And in this case, I'm going to use an external controller, which I have connected through Bluetooth, wireless Bluetooth. Let's click on it so that con uh, controller is connected to Scalar 2. Okay, let's go back to Scalar 2. So either I can click on the detect button to come to the screen and I click outside to, um, of course, close that screen or window, or I can click here on the three dot and go back to the same uh, window, or I can click on the record button itself. And when I click on the record button, it starts flashing, of course, and it says it's waiting for input. So let's give it some input, some simple chords like an E minor, G major, F major, then again a G major. As you see, you need to be quite precise if uh, you want, uh, for example, only chords. In this case, for example, I pressed by mistake the G. So you can see I have an additional note there instead of just a chord. It's practically a chord with only one note. So I click again on the recording button, which becomes now a play button. I click again outside to close that window. So if I don't want that G note, I click on it. Or actually, I click on the shift first button. I click on the note itself, and then I select remove. And in this case, I have the four nice polished chords, which, of course, I can click on each one of them to listen to what it sounds like or what they sound like. Okay, simple A minor, G major, F major, and G major. Now I can click on the play button to play um, the the all chords one after the other. Okay, perfect. And below also it tells me that uh, it has detected a number of scales, and the top one is an A minor scale, which is absolutely perfect. So we click on the play button, and it will play that scale. Perfect. So that's one way to actually record uh, or detect codes which have been played using an external controller directly into Scalar 2. Now, if you click on the detect button, now you have also the ability to clean what you detected or go again on recording. Let's go remove what has been detected like so, and we go back to having nothing been detected. Okay. Next, we're going to click on the uh, recording button again. We leave it as a MIDI. This time, instead of using an external controller, we are going to the MIDI channel, and we are going to load something like um, Core Bud, like so. We're going to open that. We're going to choose uh, a number of chords, like so. C minor, D minor, E flat major, F major. Let's close that, ensure that you are connected, like so, so that we have Core Bud 2 as a MIDI input. Now we're going to open up uh, 
against Killer 2, which is in waiting mode. We're going to the AOM transport control and click play. Okay, we're going to stop the, uh, the play in AUM and we're going to click also on the recording button to stop the detection. So as you can see, we have um, a detected C minor, D minor, E flat major and F major, which are the codes which have been played by CodeBud. Okay, and the uh, scale detected is a C Dorian mode. Let's click play. Perfect. And is perfect scale. We have an A natural because we have an F major and also a D minor. So that is perfect. Okay, so that's another way to detect using, for example, other different MIDI sources. Now let's close that and let's remove Scalar 2 from there and let's load something like um, the Grand Piano AUV3 and connect that again to the same code bud 2 instance. Then we're going to insert effects and click on that and we are going to look at the search bar and search again for Scalar. In this case, we find Scalar Audio 2. That's fine. Let's open that and maximize it as well. Now, if you click on the record button, you go into um, detection, and this time it will have selected by default audio, which makes sense because it's taking the audio from that uh, AUV for instance. I'm going to put the threshold right to the bottom so it will detect um, straight away anything, but really depends on circumstances. You may want to adjust that. So it is waiting now for input, okay? So again, go to the top in AUM, go back at the beginning, click play. Now, as you can see, let's stop the detection and exit these. The detection of audio is not as accurate as the detection of MIDI. It makes sense because it has an audio source, which is more complex in terms of detection. So if you find some codes which perhaps um, you don't think they're right, so you can actually click on the shift button again, click on the code itself and remove it. So that's right, that's right, that's right. And this one probably is not right. Again, shift and click on that and remove. And we have a similar code progression. Okay, and then it says that it is detected in C Dorian mode. Okay, and we can click on play that and we listen to the scale. Okay, and the scale works perfectly. Okay, so that's another way to actually detect the code and scale, but this time detecting them through uh, audio, which is uh, coming in into Scalar Audio 2. Okay, so just to recap, we had Chordbot 2, which is sending chord MIDI events to the Grand Piano AUV3 instance, and that one is producing, of course, audio. The audio is going through an insert effects, which in this case is Scalar 2, and that Scalar 2 had um, Detecting the codes which have been played in terms of that audio signal coming into Scalar 2. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully that has um, been useful as a first introduction on how to detect uh, codes and scale via MIDI and also via audio using Scalar 2 as an AUV3 instance in this case. But remember, you can also use it as a a standalone version in that case you can also open audio file locally and also MIDI file and if you open an audio file locally it will detect of course that uh, the code and scale based on the file that you have loaded okay see you next time bye